Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I tell you, it's a fantastic, beautiful February the 1st. And uh, uh, God is so good. And uh, hey, welcome to Black History Month. And I pray that uh, you will enjoy this month as uh, this month's month takes the time to acknowledge and recognize the many contributions that African Americans have made to this country. And, uh, and many we have made. I just hope that throughout uh, Black History Month, uh, that, uh, all blacks, uh, for that, for our contribution, uh, has been acknowledged and not just, uh, blacks who seem to be on the left or blacks who seem to be a part of any one political party, uh, but ap across the spectrum. The funny thing that I've noticed, and I guess I'm jumping right into it today, that uh, uh, there's an unusual thing that takes place in America, uh, in and out of the African-American community, and it concerns African-Americans. And that is that the uh, it is assumed, it is presumed, uh, it is uh, 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 the, the, it, it's a given almost that uh, uh, if you are African American, then you vote a certain way, you you think a certain way, you adhere to a certain doctrine. Now, notice what I said. I said within the African American community and without. Most white people assume that if you're black. You think a certain way and that you uh, 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 obey and live up to uh, or live down to a certain ideology. And most certainly within the community, uh, the assumption is that you are uh, a certain way. You represent a certain party or as one man famously said, uh, you ain't black. So uh, I pray that throughout Black History Month, that the contributions of black uh, liberals, black conservatives, black Christians, uh, black people uh, is acknowledged because uh, we have certainly contributed greatly to this country. And I, I really believe that our story uh, is yet to be told. There are those who want to just uh, paint uh, the negative sides of the story. There are those who want to key on the positive sides of the story. Well, I think the whole story ought to be told. And uh, one thing is for certain, the God of the Bible has been faithful to this country. He has been faithful people, well, regardless of their hue, and he's certainly been faithful of the people here of African descent. We've come a mighty long way. And I thank God for where the Lord has brought us, and I thank God for where the Lord is taking us. Now, listen, I'm, I'm here to invite you to, to study the word of the Lord with me tonight. But, you know, I always talk to you about some things that's on my heart and on my mind. And me and Brother Gary was talking the other day and uh, he noticed something. Now, I had brought it up some time ago, but uh, he called me and he said, you know, Bishop, I'm, I'm beginning to notice this myself. And, and the, the, our, our concern our concern is the seeming lowering of the bar when it comes to public discourse. Have you noticed the, the, the sheer amount of people who just use profanity, who, who cuss, who, I mean, I, believe it or not, today is February the 1st. I did watch before I came into uh, to the office today to work. The president, he's my president, he's your president as he gave his speech at the National Day of Prayer. The National Day of Prayer. He was speaking uh, to the audience uh, during the for the National Day of Prayer. The president uses profanity in his speech uh, on the National Day of Prayer. I'm wondering what's going on. The Bible teaches out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, is it that there is an epidemic of just wicked, dark hearts? I've noticed the corporate standard has been lowered greatly. Many of the talking heads uh, who represent corporations, who represent uh, t uh, uh, television stations and stuff like that. One particular sportscaster, my wife and I, we've gotten to the point 
where when his show comes on, we can almost count. We never run out of fingers. We just count the seconds. Most of the time, we don't run out of the fingers on one hand before the D word is used and before cussing is employed. And uh, I'm concerned about this. And uh, Brother Garrett and I was talking that's, you know, with the new growth of the podcast, some of these people who try, I didn't say Gary, they always do it, but they try to use profanity-free language, which many of them fail. When they get on the, their, their podcasts, uh, oh my, they just let, just let it fly. And then they're back on television the next day, uh, and, uh, and they use slightly better language. And I'm wondering, God, what's going on? And the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me concerning this. Because, you know, Brother Wooden believes that the Bible speaks to everything. And I believe that this is worth at least mentioning to you. And I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit tonight. Uh, because it affects us all. We all listen to the radio. We all like to listen to music. Podcast. We all talk. I am a preacher. And uh, when we see those who claim to be standard bearers, and I didn't even mention the number of preachers who seemingly have just adopted this kind of language. Now, I know that Jesus cleans hearts. Jesus uh, cleans us from the inside out. He, uh, he t- uh, takes away that heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh. David said to the Lord, create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. It seems to me uh, many need to pray uh, that prayer that David prayed in Psalms 51. But in Psalms 73, an interesting, an interesting passage here. I would just like to read to you right quick and we're going off. I I got to invite you to join me tonight. But here in Psalm 73, uh, David says that he was envious. He was envious of the wicked. He he got, I mean, he When he saw their lives, he was envious of the wicked, according to verse 3. But in verse 4, here's what he said. He said, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. That is, they have an easy time at life until the day they die. That's the trick of Facebook, of uh, of social media, uh, of these late night TV shows, morning shows, and all this. They're presenting the stars and and the uh the uh the athletes and all of these people as being people who have carefree lives and they're rich and they're smiling and everything is good. Many of them, oh my God, they're on drugs. Many uh, uh, dabble in witchcraft, perversion, wickedness. They don't be fooled by the smiling face uh, that you see uh, on the television. And David said, I looked at them and I noticed that they have an easy time at life, that they are not troubled as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. He says their pride, their arrogance compass them uh, about uh, as a chain. They wear their arrogance like a necklace. They say what they want. He says like a chain. Look at this. Violence covereth them. They wear their uh, arrogance like a chain, a symbol of their, their strength and violence is all around them. Look at this. Uh, verse 7, their eyes stand out with fatness. That is, their eyes bulge out with fatness. What, he, what he's describing here is how the enemy, the enemy knows how to project images that make people appear to be doing better than they actually are. See, in biblical times, uh, being fat and overweight was, uh, was a symbol of uh, <laughs> prosperity. And many times the fatter a person was, uh, uh, the more they thought that, uh, uh, that they were, they, they were doing good. So when he says their eyes bulge out with fatness, he, he's not describing a condition where they, 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 they look grotesque and look like they're having, uh, uh some kind of, of disease. What he's describing is they, they, they look good and oh my, they're, they're, they're healthy and, and, uh, uh, they're ready for a, a self-help commercial on how to keep your weight down. I wonder, I guess when them, uh, Ozempic commercials and everybody not taking the shot. 
Uh, so their eyes bulge out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Look at this. They set their mouths against, uh, this is what I want to get to. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongue struts, their tongue walks through the, in other words, they're strutting their stuff. These are the untouchables. These are the billionaires, the millionaires, the super athletes, the movie stars. They're wearing their chains. They're dripping, you know, they're cool. They got it going on. I mean, uh, uh, they got it. And look at this, uh, verse 10 says, therefore his people return there and drink of a full cup. Look at this. And waters, excuse me, of a full cup are wrung out of them. That is, therefore his people. If this his is referring to God, therefore his people turn to them. The people turn to them and drink in their overflowing words. We're seeing more and more uh, as a result of social media, as a result of television, the radio, more and more believers are trying to act like, look like, behave like, sing like, talk like, walk like, and live like the wicked, the ungodly. And we're seeing this creep into our churches. We're seeing it creep into our music. We're seeing it keep creep into our dance, our praise, our worship, our attire. You see? And my friends, these things ought not to be. And they, look at this, and these, these arrogant people, and they say, how doth God know? What does God know? God doesn't know everything. Don't bore me. Don't bore me with your religion. See, they're arrogant. How, what does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? The Most High doesn't know everything. Close that Bible. Don't bring that church stuff to me. I don't want to hear about hear from you nor your God. And and they say, how does God know? And then he, then he said this in verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly. Now, listen to me now, who prosper in the world. And see, you got to be careful when you limit your opinion of prosperity as worldly, worldly prosperity, the accumulation of things. All of us want things. I'm sitting here talking to you now. Brother Gary's done a tremendous job collecting things, some of the finest cameras, some of the finest microphones. He has greatly invested in it in his company, and that contributes greatly to your willingness to tune in and hear what we have to say. I appreciate that he uh, takes the time to get the best things, but there's there's there's, there's more to him than than buying cameras and 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 things. He's also in love with Jesus Christ, and it's the love for Christ and the love for the things of God that promotes him to do these things. But the end goal is not the camera; the end goal is the message. The end goal is to touch you for Jesus, for us to come together as a combination to encourage you to join us to study the word of God, to point you to God, to point you to the God of the Bible. Because if none of this points you to the God of the Bible, it's worthless. <laughs> and we know it. And so these people, they, uh, they, they, they prosper in the world. It says uh, they increase in riches. And look at the effect that it had on David. And Gary, I'm going longer than I thought I would, but I'm going to wrap this up. He says, uh, I, I, have to, I have to include verse 13. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. He says, you know what? When I look at them and I see how well they're doing and I see how they're getting along. Hey, man. Perhaps I've wasted my time in this church stuff. Perhaps I've wasted my time going by the rules. When I see the border open and I see illegals pouring in and pouring in, why wait in line? When I see 
uh, how sin and crime seem to be paying off. Why do what is right? And he said he was plagued by this all day long. And, he, and, 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 and verse 15, we learned that D David is writing his innermost thoughts because he says, if I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. And when I thought to know this, he says, it's too painful for me. But it has a good end, my friends. He says, check this out. This is why the devil don't want you to watch me. This is why the enemy don't want you in Bible study. This is why the enemy don't want you to, to attend a Bible preaching church. This is why the devil does everything he can. Turn it off. Turn it off. Don't listen. Don't listen. Listen to something else. Here's why. David said, I was, I was, uh, my feet had well now slipped. I was almost gone. I was ready to go the way of the wicked. Verse 17, and Gary, this just gives me joy, buddy. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. When I went to church and heard the word of God and the truth of God preached with power and authority, I understood. <laughs> I understood that these people are headed nowhere fast and I better stay with the Lord and work with him for surely God had put them in slippery places. Thou casteth them down into destruction, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. He says, it's look, they're going to fall. They are falling. This was, this was not reality. This, this was a game that I was watching. This is a construct. Yeah, these people know how to make you feel that they are as happy drinking and smoking and drugging and thugging, killing and stealing, being perverted, serving false gods. You name it, they'll make you think that they have discovered the fountain of you. My friends, they have not. They are in trouble with God. So that being said, I got to stop now. I got to stop now, but I'm, I'm just getting warmed up. So therefore, join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God. Because you know the preacher who keeps the Jesus pride flag over his shoulder. The preacher who refused to take it down because I believe that the rainbow belongs to the God of the Bible. The preacher who told you last Sunday that there's only a divine one and not a divine nine. Can't have both. I'm going with the one. Join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. I, I may get to Psalm 73. I may get back to it. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I tell you this, you're going to be blessed real good. And I love you. I love you for tuning in. I love you for watching. I love you for your, your support. I love you for your prayers. Let's continue to pray for Israel. Let's continue to pray for this nation. Let's pray that God sends revival. Let's pray that the Lord save souls. Let's pray that God protect us all and watch over us. God bless you, my friends. I love you. See you tonight.